Warren and Charlie, this is a question. Actually, we got a, a handful of questions on this topic. This is probably the best formulation of it. Uh, Warren, uh, you have been a uh, longtime outspoken Democrat. With all the talk about socialism versus capitalism taking place among Democratic presidential candidates, do you anticipate an impact on Berkshire in the form of more regulations, higher corporate taxes, or even calls for breakups among the many companies we own, we own if they were to win? And how do you think about your own politics as a fiduciary of our company, and at the same time as someone who has said that simply being a business leader doesn't mean you've put your citizenship in a blind trust? Yeah, I have said that, that you do not put your citizenship in a blind trust, but you also don't speak on behalf of your company. Uh, uh, you, speak, you do speak as a citizen if you speak, and therefore you have to be careful about when you do speak because it's going to be assumed you're speaking on behalf of your company. Berkshire Hathaway uh, certainly in 54 years has, has never and will never uh, made a contribution uh, to a presidential candidate. I don't think we've made a contribution to any political candidate, but I, I don't want to say for 54 years that... that uh, we don't do it now. We have... We operate in several regulated industries, and, and our, our railroad and our utility, as a practical matter, they have to have a presence in Washington or and in the state legislatures in which they operate. So they have, we, have, we have some, a few, I don't know how many, political action committees, uh, which existed when we bought it, uh, we bought the companies at, at, at subsidiaries, and uh, I think that unquestionably they, they, they make some contributions uh, simply to achieve the same access as their competitors. I mean, if the trucking industry is going to lobby, I'm sure the railroad industry is going to lobby. Uh, but the general, well, the rule is, I mean, that people do not pursue their own political interests with your money here. We've, we've had one or two managers over the years, for example, that would, would do some fundraising where they were fundraising from people who were suppliers to them or something of the sort. And if I ever find out about it, that ends promptly. Uh, but this, my position is at Berkshire is not to be used to further my own political beliefs, but my own political beliefs can be expressed uh, as a person, not as a representative of Berkshire, uh, of when a campaign is important. I, don't, I try to minimize it, but, I, I, but uh, there, it's no secret that in the last election, for example, I, I raised money. I won't give money to PACs. I, I accidentally did it one time. I didn't know it was a PAC. But uh, uh, I don't do it, but I've raised, I've raised substantial sums. I don't like the way money is used in politics. I've written op-ed pieces for the New York Times in the past on, on uh, the influence of money in politics. On your question about uh, the, the, I will just say I'm a card-carrying capitalist, um, but I, <laughs> And I, I believe we wouldn't be sitting here except for the market system and the rule of law and some things that are embodied in this country. Uh, so I, you don't have to worry about me uh, changing in that manner, but I also think that uh, capitalism does involve regulation. It involves taking care of people who are left behind, particularly when the country gets enormously prosperous. But beyond that, uh, I have no Berkshire podium for pushing anything. Charlie? Well, I think we're all in favor of some kind of a government social safety net in a country as prosperous as ours. What a lot of us don't like is the vast stupidity with which parts of that social safety net are managed by the government. It'd be much better if we could do it more wisely. But I, I think it also might be better if we did it more liberally. <laughs> 